Hi there, on today's Top Tip Tuesday, we're going to be jumping into mesh tools and we're going to be creating a really nice dynamic geometric animation using fields, using the mesh tools subdivider and the brilliant mesh tools inset. So there's lots to do. Let's get that clock started and we'll begin. In our scene, we have this default plane. We've got a green light in here, which is making it look like this. Uh, we don't need all of these default width segments and height segments. So let's put those down on one for each. And we're going to do all of this uh, with all of our polygon creation using mesh tools. Let's go to Insidium mesh tools and bring in a mesh tools subdivider. Put our plane as a child and this subdivides it. Obviously, let's put our subdivision levels up to say seven. And now it's really heavily subdivided it. Let's drive where it is so heavily subdivided using a noise. To do that, we'll go to the shader, put in a noise and let's open up the noise just make a couple of changes here and um, we'll just leave it kind of default really but we'll put the low clip on maybe 35 and we'll crush it down a bit so we're really adding a load of contrast here yep something like that looks good and then we'll go back to our subdivider and we can just reduce this tolerance down quite low because we want to have we don't really want many where there aren't that many subdivisions going on that's looking good i'm just going to go back to my noise and just cycle through a few seeds until i get something that i like yep i like that one okay let's go back to our subdivider now there's loads of new cool modes in the subdivider which we'll explore in a minute but we'll just leave it in the default one for now so now what we want to do is we want to create some dynamic extrusions of these uh, polys we'll do that with another mesh tools let's go to insidium mesh tools inset and we'll put our subdivider as a child of the inset now if i just dolly in a bit what the inset does if i increase the amount it creates an inner face for every polygon and four outer polys so let's put that amount up to say 33 and now we're able to offset that inner face so we get these really cool extrusions let's put this on say 100 and now they're all sticking up let's go n a to hide the lines so now that we've got this we want to affect where this happens and control it using fields let's go to inset fields we're going to add a linear field and let's just go to filters i'm not looking at my fields let's activate fields okay there's our field let's put our field length at about 180 and we'll go to the remapping by default it's just straight linear Let's change that to contour mode curve. And then we're just going to pull that out a bit so we get a nice ease in. Now you can see with our linear uh, field uh, that we're getting this perfect, beautiful linear slope. But actually we want the inner faces to remain um, uh, horizontal. So to do that, let's go to our inset object tab and change the sampling mode from per point to centered yep so look now those faces are all uh, perfectly horizontal and we get some nice stepping that looks cool right so what would be nice is if we could break up this perfect linear transition so we'll do that with another field let's go to inset and we'll go to fields we're going to add a random field which adds this uh, random kind of offset which looks good and we can mix this with our linear one to get a not so perfect fall off all we need to do is change the blend mode of the random to overlay yep cool and now we're getting that nice linear transition but it's broken up by the random that looks really good so let's add some animation the linear field we're going to animate we're going to go to tags animation tags and vibrate in here we're going to activate rotation we're going to put a thousand amplitude in the heading and then um a hundred in the other axes and then maybe 0.2 so now as that field rotates yeah we're getting this type of animation that looks quite cool so we can add a little bit of a delay effect to this finally let's go to inset fields and we'll add a delay let's put it on spring mode and maybe reduce it down to 30 percent and now yeah we're getting a bit of that delay motion as that moves around okay that's looking really cool let's just do one more field and restrict this to the center of our plane so we'll do that by adding a spherical field 
and we're going to set this one to multiply. So this means that we, the, the sphere is going to dictate where it happens, but we will get all of that nice linear and random uh, affected uh, extrusions inside the sphere. Let's get the sphere and increase the size to something like that. Let's go to the remapping, do the same thing, contour mode curve and give it a nice easy in and ease out something like that cool that'll do and then we'll just hide those fields again by taking them off the filters so now we have got something that looks like this that's looking pretty neat so then if we go to our subdivide let's explore some of these other modes this is bilinear which is the default but we've got a bilinear offset now which means that we can offset those subdivisions which gives us some nice kind of random rectangular tiling of, uh, of our uh, subdividing so that's pretty cool we've also got an awesome mode called shards which gives a really cool sharding effect that looks really nice doesn't it I like that a lot and then there's another one called whirl and this is a similar one it creates an inner poly four outer polys and by adjusting the strength you can get some really kind of aggressively thin and thick um, rectangular tiling effects um, and you can get some pretty awesome effects and obviously you can change and animate this as it is uh, animating and that's looking really nice so that's how we can use mesh uh, mesh tools with some layered fields and using the brilliant new options in the mesh tool subdivider to get these really nice animated extruded surfaces